It has been 75 years since we last recognized a nutrient as a vitamin. So is ergothionine, the new kid on the block, worthy of truly being classified as a vitamin? Let's find out. Hey, beautiful humans. Welcome back to our channel, Inc. Nutrition. My name is Jack. I'm a dietitian, and I'm here to help translate the science of nutrition so that you can live a happier and healthier life. Please like, comment, and subscribe for videos every week. Thanks so much. So, ergothionine, what is it? All right, it is technically a type of amino acid. And while it may sound new, it's definitely not. Uh, it has been around for over a century, okay? And it has been linked to a lot of health benefits. And low levels of this compound has been linked to a lot of health problems. Like what, you may be asking? Well, first, let's talk about its association with heart health. One large comprehensive prospective cohort study uh, looked at over 3,000 subjects who did not have any cardiovascular disease at the beginning of the study. And over 21 years, researchers measured 112 different metabolites or compounds found in food and determined that ergothionine was a significant marker of cardiovascular health, even after taking into account all the other confounding variables. So when we look at this long-term data, there were some positive correlations with ergothionine concentrations in the blood and coronary artery disease and overall mortality and stroke and even type 2 diabetes. So heart health? Check. Now let's take a look at ergothionine and the research related to our brain. So ergothionine declines after age 60 is what we're seeing and lower levels of this compound is associated with rapid cognitive decline, including dementia. And this is likely related to neuroinflammation and how it regulates the nerve two pathway. I know that's a bit sciencey, but that's really the mechanism behind it. And is this the magic answer to Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative disease? No, but it definitely should not be ignored. And I think so far what we're seeing in the research, it is really promising when we look at how powerful and impactful ergothionine is with overall cognition. So heart health, check. Brain health, check. Let's put those together and now talk about longevity. Now, if there was one health buzzword that is my least favorite that I really can't stand, it would be anti-aging. I, I just don't think there's a whole lot of validity when you slap that on uh, certain supplements. I think it's quite a marketing strategy. However, when it comes to ergothionine, this label may be accurate. In some recent research, we're really starting to see that this bioactive metabolite reduces oxidative damage to DNA, and it's known as this cytoprotectant, meaning that it can really protect cells from damage and early death. So in theory, right, when you take into account these antioxidant and cellular protection properties, in addition, right, to the heart health benefits, and the brain health benefits, I think calling it an anti-aging compound is kind of true. And there's been some famous researchers that actually have called it a longevity vitamin. So the important question, the practical question is, where can we find ergothionine? How can we get more of this in our diet so that we can live longer? Well, it's quite interesting because you can't get it really from plants or animals. So I'm gonna give you a second to think about that, right? What foods can you get that aren't coming from plants or animals? Fungi, mushrooms, all right? Mushrooms are in a whole class on their own. And this is one of the reasons why I highly, highly recommend you to get more mushrooms in your diet. Weekly, maybe even daily, you should be having some mushrooms. But the classic white button mushrooms, they're not that concentrated in the ergothionine. They're not that actually nutrient dense to begin with. So what are the best kinds, the ones I recommend that have the most ergothionine? Well, we have oyster, porcini, shiitake, and maitake. Now all of those you should be able to find at a grocery store. So start tossing those in your cart. 
And interesting to note, mushrooms are correlated with better immune function, lower risk for cancer, and a really big meta-analysis that looked at a ton of prospective studies, over 600,000 participants found that mushroom consumption was strongly associated with lower risk of all-cause mortality. That is not nothing. And keep in mind, right, this is correlation, not causation. I fully understand that, but I do believe in the medicinal properties of mushrooms, and I think a lot of people need to eat more. So back to the original question, should it be classified as a vitamin? Well, let's talk about what a vitamin is. It is a nutrient that you have to get from food because our body doesn't naturally make it. And it has to be linked uh, to a disease or illness if you don't get enough, right? So you, a deficiency in that nutrient has to directly lead to a disease. So let's look at ergothionine. Well, the first part of that, yeah, qualifies. You have to get it from food. Our body doesn't make ergothionine. And interestingly enough as well, we have a very specific transporter in our cell that only carries ergothionine. So that says a lot. However, while low levels of ergothionine are associated with problems with our heart and our brain health and our cognition, it's not yet directly linked to a specific disease if, right, if we don't get enough of it. So I think at the time anyways, where the current research stands, it's not essential for life, but I do think it is essential for long-term health. So we can call it a phytonutrient, a metabolite, a bioactive compound, an amino acid, but not a vitamin, not yet anyways. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much. I hope you learned some cool things. Uh, I love talking about all these really neat compounds within plants, within foods, within fungi. So if you want me to talk about any other thing related to food, related to nutrition, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Please like, please comment, please subscribe for videos every week. And again, my name's Jack. I'm a dietitian and I'm here to just help, help you improve your health. We have a whole team of dietitians as well. So if anybody wants some specific recommendations or one-on-one -on -one coaching, just reach out, all right? Okay, thank you so much. Remember, long-term health begins in your kitchen. I hope everyone has a delicious day. Ergothiophy, er, ergothiony, er, so it is important for the heart. Original question. Hello. Eat more mushrooms.